I want to move into the next phase of this podcast, starting with the benefits of a ketogenic diet. Why would you do a ketogenic diet? So I think there are two clear benefits to a ketogenic diet. These being intractable epilepsy. There's very good data that in children or adults with epilepsy, uh, a ketogenic diet can be quite helpful. And there's some reasonable data that in those with neurodegenerative disorders, Parkinson's, perhaps Alzheimer's, diseases in which we know the mitochondria are broken and in which, to be frank, pyruvate dehydrogenase and glucose metabolism may be broken for some reason or another, Bypassing that with beta oxidation and fatty acid oxidation seems to improve mental functioning for a lot of people. So if you have a brain disorder, whether it's severe epilepsy, whether it's Parkinson's, whether it's Alzheimer's, I think using ketogenic diets as an adjunctive treatment to kind of bypass the main energy system that the human body uses, that being the glucose energy system through pyruvate dehydrogenase um, is a benefit. Okay. Second thing, I do think that when you are in ketosis, and you have beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate in some sort of an equilibrium in your blood, there's good evidence that that will quell appetite. I think a lot of diets fail because they don't address appetite. I think the success of a ketogenic diet has been because of the ways that it addresses appetite. Now, I'll be very quick to say, I don't think this is the best way to address appetite, and I'll explain that in a moment. But if you are in ketosis, your appetite appears to be lower based on the research. I think this is why a ketogenic diet works for people because it controls appetite and why many diets fail. Weight watchers, uh, if it fits your macros, counting calories, these fail long-term because they will do nothing to address your appetite. And you will put yourself in a calorie restricted prison, which your body after millions of years of pre-hominid and hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution will break out of, I assure you. So how does a ketogenic diet affect appetite? There's a couple of studies which I think point to the mechanisms here, which are interesting to address with the asterisk, the caveat being, and I will explain this in a moment, that I don't think this is the best way to control your appetite. So you can see here in this study, the effects of a high protein ketogenic diet on hunger, appetite, and weight loss in obese men feeding ad libitum, which means they let these guys eat as much as they wanted, as long as it was ketogenic. They said in the short term, high protein, low carbohydrate ketogenic diets reduce hunger, Lower food intake significantly more than do high protein, medium carbohydrate, non ketogenic diets. So there's something going on here with appetite, which can be beneficial. But again, there are better ways to do this. And that will be the takeaway from this part of the podcast. Just keep, stay with me here. Um, next study I want to show you is looking at a ketone ester and levels of ghrelin. So ghrelin is a hunger hormone in humans. And you can see that increased blood levels of ketones directly suppress appetite. Uh, they had a ketone ester drink. This is not nutritional ketosis. They lowered plasma ghrelin levels, perceived hunger, and desire to eat. This is probably one of the major mechanisms by which a ketogenic diet or supplemental ketones, either ketone esters or ketone salts, will lower perceived hunger and desire to eat because there is a normal hormone in humans called ghrelin that makes us hungry. Okay? So, why do I think this is not addressing the root cause? Or why do I think this is not the best way to fix your appetite? I want to direct your attention to a podcast I did with Tucker Goodrich where we talked about a drug called Ramonaband. It was never approved in the United States, but it is an obesity drug that was approved for a short amount of time in Europe. It's an inverse agonist of the CB1 receptor in humans, meaning that it's essentially, at the end of the day, going to block the cannabinoid 1 receptor in humans. Now, what does blocking a cannabinoid receptor in humans do? It creates less hunger. It blocks our impulse at hunger and people lose weight. Great, miracle drug, right? Not so fast. There was an increased rate of suicide with this drug. Apparently, the human body uses drugs in an elegant, complex fashion and simply blocking a receptor doesn't always result in only the desired effect that we want. This is this problem with side effects of all molecules, something I've talked about in the past many times. So Ramona Bayant was never approved in the States. We don't need people having more suicidal ideation. But the mechanism is what is illustrative here. The fact that if you block the CB1 receptor, if you block the cannabinoid system in the human brain, that you can get people to eat less. Okay. Is the reverse true? If you activate the cannabinoid system in the human brain, will people eat more? Yes. This is what happens with the munchies when you smoke marijuana. There are cannabinoids in marijuana, whether it's THC, cannabidiol, or others. And there are endogenous cannabinoids in our system. 
uh, like anandamide that activate these receptors. Those receptors don't exist just so that the marijuana smoke compounds can tickle them when you smoke marijuana, but marijuana is tapping into your endogenous inside of your body, the system of cannabinoids. We know that blocking one of those receptors with the inverse agonist from Onaban leads you to eat less. And if you activate that receptor, it can lead you to eat more. There are drugs that do the opposite that are used for cancer cachexia. They are given to people to get them to eat more and they will activate those receptors. Sometimes they even give people actual cannabinoids to do this to get them to eat more uh, when they have cachexia, which is wasting from cancer. Where am I going with this? The really interesting piece of this is that polyunsaturated fatty acids in animal models break down into a compound named 2-AG that can also stimulate those receptors. So here's a study. Dietary linoleic acid, which is the molecule you guys have heard me talk about all the time, elevates endogenous 2-AG and anandamide. That's that other cannabinoid that's endogenous and induces obesity. Again, this is in mice, but I believe the same thing could be happening in humans. So what I want to suggest here, the hypothesis that I would advance is that you are hungry because you are eating polyunsaturated fatty acids, because you are eating junk. You are hungry because you are insulin resistant. You are hungry because you are tickling the cannabinoid receptors in your brain as along with other things. That is why you are hungry. You can decrease ghrelin with ketones, but the real way, I think the best way for humans to decrease their hunger is to clean up your freaking diet. Food quality matters. Carbohydrates are not the reason that you are hungry. Ketones will decrease ghrelin. There are other ways to mitigate your appetite. And those are things like an animal-based diet. You cut out processed sugars, which may affect hunger through a different mechanism that is beyond the scope of this podcast. And you cut out seed oils and you limit those linoleic acid byproducts, 2-AG and anandamide, at least in animal models. I think this is going to happen in humans too. And you will be less hungry. And you will have the benefits, the benefits of the insulin, and yes, I'll explain this later in the podcast, that comes after you eat carbohydrates. You will have the benefits of carbohydrates because I think that carbohydrates are clearly beneficial for humans. Can you have your cake, quote unquote, and eat it too? Yes, except your cake is made from fruit and honey. It's not made from grains or seed oils or processed sugars or white potatoes or rice or oats. Get it, you guys get it. Okay, so that's what I'm driving at here is that yes, Controlling appetite is critical. I do not think a ketogenic diet is the only way to do that. I think the better way to control your appetite is to think very clearly and very intentionally and to act very intentionally with regard to food quality. This is why I'm not a fan of counting calories if it fits your macros, Weight Watchers. If you don't address food quality, you will never address hunger. You will never address satiety. There are many in the nutrition space who would advance ideas that you can eat whatever you want as long as X. And those conditions can be things like it doesn't spike your blood sugar above a certain level. And I'll talk about why I disagree with that. Or as long as it fits your macros, as long as it doesn't increase your calories too much. I've spoken on other podcasts and previously about why those think those things, those ideas are wrong because we know that not all calories are created equally. There are many good studies to suggest that certain fatty acids, those being polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acids like linoleic acid, affect your physiology essentially in an endocrine-like way differently than other fats. If not all calories are the same, if calories from honey are not the same as calories from sucrose, table sugar, or Coca-Cola, then we have a burgeoningly complex, interesting world of nutrition in which reductionism is death and reductionism will mislead us. And those are all things that I try and advance consistently in my work. The idea that Coca-Cola is not the same as honey, that's this podcast, that seed oils are not the same as animal fats, and we should be careful because these will affect hunger in different ways. The key to your weight loss is fixing your hunger. You can do that by depriving yourself of carbohydrates and their benefits, which I'll talk about later in this podcast, or you can eliminate what I believe is the ultimate root cause, which is the seed oils. Choice is yours. But this is what I would advance. This is the hypothesis that I will advance. Weight loss is a deficiency of polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially omega-6 linoleic acid. You do that, you limit that in your diet, and you will lose weight. We'll see.